Once again, welcome back to the Pictou County Wellness Center here in beautiful Pictou County, Nova Scotia at the 2019 Nova Scotia Major Bantam Hockey League Provincial Tournament. Game number three of the day, game number seven of the tournament, and this is the last two teams to play their second games out of the modified round robin. In this game we have featuring the visiting team, the South Shore Lumberjacks, and the home team from Cape Breton, the John Old Jim Cougars. Good morning for a few more minutes. My name is Michael Petter. Thank you so much for tuning in here on 360 Live for this morning's action. Well, it'll be this afternoon's action by the time the game actually gets rolling here at the Nova Scotia Major Bantam Hockey League Provincial Tournament. As South Shore come in with a record of 1-0, and John Old Jim come in with a record of 0 and 1. The Lumberjacks looking to move back into a tie for first place with the Excel Physio, while John Old Jim looking to avoid moving into a or staying in a tie for what would essentially be sixth and seventh place, as uh, the Pro Hot or the uh, Rangers are 0 and 2. John Old Jim has mentioned 0 and 1 to this point. Taking a look at the keys to the game, the first key for the Lumberjacks has to be the fact that they are getting such balanced scoring out of the five goals that they got yesterday in their game against the Rangers. 11 different players earned points. Or sorry, nine different players earned points, my apologies. Dylan Rayfuse with an assist. Ryan Hopkins with a goal and an assist. Will Cook with a goal and two assists. Luke Woodworth, one and one. Jonas Talbot, an assist. Brandon Coleman, a goal. Chad Mayer, a goal. Kyle Hopkins, an assist. Gage Zwicker, an assist. And anytime you can look at your score sheet and see that kind of balanced scoring, obviously that represents pretty much the ideal of what you can hope for over the course of a game, or of a tournament. So that kind of balanced scoring is key number one in this game for the South Shore Lumberjacks with their record of 1-0, that 5-1 victory over the Rangers, nine different players accumulating points. And that is the first key. The second key to this game is going to be special teams. They have already been a big part of the two games that we've had earlier today. And taking a look at the special teams of these two teams so far, the power play of the Cougars, they only had one opportunity in their game yesterday against Excel Physio. They went 0 for 1, but their penalty kill, and this is where special teams may become a big story, their penalty kill killed off just one of three shorthanded situations, two power play goals against the Cape Breton John Old Jim Cougars in that opening game. For South Shore, meanwhile, their power play, it was perfect. Two for two in their game against the Rangers. And their penalty kill, it was also perfect. One for one. So all three special team situations came out in favor of the Lumberjacks in their game. Where Cape Breton, the Cougars, just one of four special team situations came out in their favor. And obviously, that is something that if there are a lot of penalties in this game could have a big impact on how this game plays out. And I've got to say, speaking of penalties, speaking of the refereeing, we have got to give huge kudos to the referees in this tournament so far. They've called, generally speaking, what's needed to get called. They've let go what they could afford to let go. In this game that we just finished up here between the Pro Hockey Life Harbor Storm and the Gulls, we had probably uh, close to the most penalty minutes that we've seen in any game in this tournament so far. Although we did have a couple of misconducts get called at other points, which, you know, those 10 minute penalties end up adding to the totals in a hurry. But if you look at the overall total in the game that was just held, 16. 24 minutes in penalties altogether 
And actually, that is the most penalty minutes that we've had in any one game, even with games with misconducts. They've only hit 20 minutes and 18 minutes when you throw those misconducts in. So uh, some very well-officiated and, and well-played hockey by both of these teams. And our third and final key to this game, as far as the Cougars are concerned, is they're going to need to try and pick up their speed a little bit here against a Lumberjacks team that has got so much uh, speed and precision on the back end. Their forwards are going to have to be much quicker getting on the Lumberjack defenseman to try and break up uh, potential breakouts and, and rushes up the ice. Those Cougars forwards are going to need to be doing a good job to close gaps quickly on defensemen as they try and bring the puck up the ice. So those are your keys to the game. Balanced scoring from the Lumberjacks. Power plays for both teams. And quickness of the forwards for the John Old Jim Cougars. Now we are a little bit ahead of schedule here uh, as it's not quite, actually right now it is 11.53 according to my clock. And this game was supposed to have a 12 o'clock start so we may be a little bit ahead of schedule here getting this game rolling. If we do start early, that's fine. If we hold off a little bit until we actually get this game going, that's okay too. In the meantime, join the conversation about this tournament. You can see on the screen there is my, pet, my uh, Twitter handle, PetterPC underscore sports. The PC standing, of course, for Pictou County. Uh, I am Michael Petter of Petter Pictou Sports. I've been brought in to work with 360 Live here for this tournament. And I want to give a big thank you to everyone at 360 Live for inviting me to be with you for this broadcast. I really do appreciate the opportunity to be here at my home rink and call this incredibly exciting major Bantam Provincial Tournament that we've had so far. If you haven't had a chance to catch any of the action yet, let's run very quickly through what has happened so far. And we'll start with the opening game yesterday where the Wherewell Major Bantam Bombers, the host team, and the number seven seed, technically, uh, they finished the regular season in fifth, but because they lost their playoff round, they came into the tournament as, officially speaking, the seventh seed tied the number one team in the province, the Gulls, by a score of 4-4. The Bombers actually carried a 3-1 lead into the third period of that one. The Gulls came back to tie it at three. The Bombers took a lead with just two minutes left in the third, and then the Gulls scored to tie it up with just 19 seconds left in that third period to give us that 4-4 tie. Then, as mentioned, the Excel Physio beat the John Old Jim Cougars by a score of 5-2 to two in the second game of the day yesterday. And then, as also mentioned, South Shore beat the Rangers 5-1. We held our opening ceremonies where the league awards were handed out, and congratulations to all of the players who earned awards over the course of that ceremony. And then after that, we had the opening, or the, uh, opening game of the tournament for Pro Hockey Life Harbor Storm. They took on the host Wherewell Bombers who played their second game of the day. And the Bombers trailed going into the third period and you thought that with the Bombers trailing and with it being their second game of the day against the Storms first, they might not have had the legs, but they did. And they came back to tie that one. It ended with a 3-3 draw. So after two games, the Bombers had a record of 0-0-2. Then everybody got a chance to go home and get some sleep. We came back here early this morning, our first game at 8 o'clock. Saw Excel Physio beat the Rangers by a score of 3-2. to two. So Excel with a record now of 2-0. and oh. And not only are they 2-0, and oh, but they are also uh, at a very good number on their uh, goal differential ratio. They've scored eight goals and given up four, which means their goal uh, ratio six. 0.667, and if they end up in a tie with uh, the only other team that is uh, sitting undefeated right now, and that is, of course, the uh, South Shore Lumberjacks, that is a very good 
goal differential number to have to get things started. And then the Gulls improved to 1-0-1 with a 4-0 victory over the Pro Hockey Life Harbor Storm between the two teams that both ended up with ties against Wherewell yesterday. So as we go into the final game of the first two games for each team, the standings look like this right now. In first place, it is Excel Physio with two victories. In second place, with a win and a tie, it is the Gulls. In third place, with a 1-0 record, is South Shore. And the reason they are, there are two reasons why they are alone in third place, even though they're tied on points with the Bombers. One, they got their victory by way of, or they got their points by way of a victory as opposed to two ties. And two, they've only played one game, whereas the Bombers have played twice. So South Shore in third place right now, but they can move into a tie for first with a victory in this game. In fourth place, you've got the Bombers with two points over two games from a pair of ties. Fifth place right now belongs to the Pro Hockey Life Harbor Storm with a loss and a tie. So they're sitting on one point after two games. 0-1, the record for the John L. Jim Cougars. So they're in sixth place and in seventh with a record of 0-2 at this point are the Rangers. And obviously you need to finish in that top four if you want to keep playing into the later games on Saturday and into Sunday as well. So right now the teams on the outside looking in are the Storm, the John L. Jim Cougars, and the Rangers. But there's still plenty left to decide. Every team's got two games left, except for these two teams who are about to play. They've got three games left each, and we're about to get them out onto the ice to get things going here as we're setting for an actual 12 o'clock puck drop, it looks like. So going to be right at schedule here, which can't ask for much more than that over the course of a tournament like this where you've got games scheduled to go every two hours. Once again, don't forget you can join the conversation. Check out my Twitter handle, PetterPC underscore sports. The Cougars making their way out in their home blues with the red arms and the gold numbers on the back there. Being led by their goaltender, Lucas Frazier. Frazier in this tournament, an 0-1-1 record, a 5.0 goals against average and an 844 save percentage. Although those numbers somewhat belie the quality of goaltending that we saw from Frazier yesterday. And leading the way is Ian Porter. He's going to get the start, his first appearance in this tournament. So Porter will be the goaltender for the Lumberjacks, Frazier for the Cougars. And let's th send things downstairs for the introduction and O Canada. While we wait for them to start talking, we'll tell you, remind you that the Lumberjacks are in their home or in their road whites. The Cougars are the home team for this game. The Lumberjacks in their whites with the blue arms and the red trim and the blue numbers on the backs. And now we can tell you the starting five in front of goaltender Ian Porter, Porter 
on the back end, it will be the dense defensive pairing of Kyle Hopkins and Mackenzie Connors with the forward unit of Ethan Brennan, Kiefer Huskins, and Brennan Coleman. For the Cougars, in front of goaltender Lucas Frazier, the starting five include Van Soller on the back end with his partner, uh, that is uh, Connor White, with up front Ryan McMullen, along with Brandon Clark and Reese Allen. And we are underway. The puck down into the Cougar zone right off the get-go. Down in behind the goal line. Four players in there battling for it, trying to work it loose. And now it does come loose to Clark, or to McMullen, rather. He gets it ahead for Allen. Allen tries to push it forward, but he can't get it down into the Lumberjack zone. Huskins gets it up to Brandon. Brandon can't get it back into the Cougar zone. Excuse me, and now Hopkins plays it ahead. Knocked down there by Soller. Soller, as we got a delayed penalty coming up here against the Lumberjacks, gets it ahead for Clark. Clark has it knocked off his stick, but no control by the Lumberjacks, so play will carry on. Clark will take it all the way back as out of the net for the extra attacker is goaltender Lucas Frazier. Cougars still looking to push things forward here as they have the extra attacker out there on the delayed penalty. Now it's into the Lumberjack zone. Clark takes the shot. It goes off a stick and wide. Now into the corner, coming out the near side, back to the line for Pettengale. Pettengale shot. That gets partially blocked, goes into the corner. Out in front from McDonald, or from McIntyre, excuse me. And they're going to call head contact for that initial penalty, and it is going to be Kyle uh, Hopkins who's going to go off. So we talked about... This has one of the keys to the game, special team situations. And the first one goes in favor of the Cougars at 117 of the first period here. Head contact, a double minor. So the Cougars, who are 0 for 1 with the man advantage so far in the tournament, go up against the Lumberjacks, whose penalty kill is 1 for 1. And 8 seconds into the double minor, a shot taken, and Porter gobbles that up right into his midsection to make the save. Cougars win the draw. Another shot that gets deflected, goes just wide. Into the corner near side. And working up the wall, now back to the line for Pettengale. Pettengale back down, now back up to Pettengale again. Pettengale, his shot gets blocked there by Cook. And out to center it comes. And now to O'Neill. O'Neill tries to make a pass across. That's disrupted by Zwicker, and the Cougars have to go all the way back into their own zone. 40 seconds gone in the double minor. Pass ahead here for McMullen. McMullen into the zone, takes the shot. That goes wide, off the glass, all the way back out to center, where it's picked up by LaFrenz. He finds Pettengale. Pettengale stops just on the offensive side of the red line, then goes backwards. Nearly loses the puck and then does play it back to LaFrenz. LaFrenz has it roll off of his stick and Ryan Hopkins will send it down the length of the ice as the Cougars have to go back and get organized again here. Pass up for Drew McIntyre. McIntyre working his way ahead. Gets the puck knocked away from him there by Woodworth but it rolls right down to Soller. He gets it ahead. Again, Woodworth is there to break things up. 2.30 left to go in the double minor. Now here comes McIntyre into the zone. McIntyre down into the corner. Out in front. They whack away at it. Puck still loose. Still loose. And now Woodworth able to pick up and clear it out. Down the length of the ice. 2.15 left to go in the double minor. Cougars back. Getting the rush up the ice again here. Pass near side for Soller. Soller trying to work his way around Brennan. Allen there to help out as well. He plays it back to White, but White has to go all the way back down below his own goal line to get it. He plays it around the boards and out to center. Hopkins plays it back in, but then bringing it right back out. Here comes Clark. Clark can't get a shot through. It rolls through to McIntyre. He tries to get it out in front, but that's broken up before Allen can get a stick on it. Now Soller with it at the point. His shot goes wide, comes off the end boards to McIntyre. McIntyre turns and fires. 
That hits the bodies in front. It comes back to McIntyre again. He takes another shot, and this time he scores. So the power play goes one for two here as it took more than the first two minutes for the Cougars to strike, but strike they do at 349 of period number one. A power play goal off the stick of Drew McIntyre. His first goal, first point of the tournament. And it's one nothing for the John L. Jim Cougars. Lumberjacks coach Sean Woodworth not too happy about something there. Has his complaint heard, but nothing is going to change as a result. And here comes Woodworth into the Cougar zone as play resumes. He loses it. It ends up going to Seymour. He tries to work it up the wall, but it's kept in by Hopkins. Down in behind the net. Now Soller with it. He'll work it up the near side. Out past Talbot. Allen and White with the assists. So again, it's McIntyre, his first goal, first point of the tournament, assisted by Reese Allen and Connor White on the power play at 349 of this first period. We're now at 418 of the period. And the faceoff sees Zwicker waved out of the circle. Cougars win the draw. Patton Gale with the shot. That goes wide. Comes all the way up the wall to LaFriends. LaFriends will play it down behind the net there for uh, O'Neill. O'Neill played it through the slot. It goes all the way to the far wall. Now LaFriends pinching in. Puck comes back to O'Neill. He takes a shot, and that's steered aside by Porter. Kyle Hopkins plays it around behind the net. Out come the Lumberjacks. Pass ahead there for Mayer. Mayer with the shot. And then a little bit of a snow shower there from Zwicker. And that draws the ire of a couple of the Cougar players. Understandably. With 4.55 gone here in period number one. Big thanks to everybody tuning in here on 360 Live. There's a shot from the point and quick reaction time there from Frazier as the puck changed directions on its way toward him. McMullen dumps it in, comes back up the wall there. Hutchins gets to it. Now it's to the line and out as Ford had it hop over his stick. Hustling back was J uh, Jobes, but they're going to call Ford for the interference as he got in the way of Brannon. So the power play of the Lumberjacks, which is two for two on the tournament so far, goes to work for the first time here in this one. At 524 as the interference call against Jackson Ford. And the penalty kill of the Cougars, as mentioned, just killed off one of three in that opening game. There's a pass across intended for Woodworth, but a stick got on it. Woodworth still able to track the puck down. He takes a shot. Save made by Frazier. Now Woodworth gets it back again, but he's met by some pressure. Back to Hopkins, to Woodworth again. There's a shot, save made, rebound, puck is loose in front. And I don't, which defender made that save? It was Reese Allen diving across to get in front of that puck. And he makes the big save. Again, a big thanks to everybody watching, including Jeff S. McDonald, saying go Cougars, go, cheering you on from, from Halifax. Uncle Jeff is proud of you. So, big thanks to Jeff and everybody else watching. Of course, it's 12.15 on a Friday. Shouldn't you be at work right now? <laughs> of course. Here's Kyle Hopkins with the puck. He dumps it in. We're all at work. We just might have this open on a tab on our computers while we're getting our work done. Absolutely. Played to the line there 
by Seymour. Held in at the line there by Kyle Hopkins. He plays it to Woodworth. Now down to Zwicker. He gets one shot away. Save made by Frazier. Puck back to the wall. Woodworth. Back to Hopkins again. Kyle Hopkins plays it to Ryan. Back over to Kyle. Tees that one up and it goes just wide. Now Ryan gets it again. Back to Kyle. Over to Woodworth. Woodworth. Centering it there, and that one goes just wide off the stick of Coleman. Good opportunity there, but just a little bit off target. Now Pettengale gets it to the line, kept in by Kyle Hopkins. He works it down the wall to Ryan. Ryan Hopkins tried to get it through. That goes off the stick of Christmas. Still gets to Coleman, though. Now there's a chance in front. Ryan Hopkins, and coming across to make the save there is Frazier. Ten seconds left in the penalty. Christmas will send it down the ice, and that should pretty much do it for this power play opportunity. Sometimes your goaltender has to be your best penalty killer. That was certainly the case here in this one. Kyle Hopkins with the puck now, gets it ahead for Mayer. Mayer brings it across the line, ends up losing control of it though, and that ends up resulting in an offside with 7.22 left to go here in period number one. Okay, Jeff, you're on night shift. You're able to get away with that one. And uh, so Lucas, the goaltender, is your nephew. Good to know. He's uh, off to a pretty decent start so far. Here is that goaltender, Lucas Frazier. Puck comes to the near wall. McIntyre gets it there, plays it to the line and out just past Kyle Hopkins. Now Connor's hustling to get back to it. But Allen gets a shot away and a big save there by Porter as Reese Allen with some wheels, gets onto that puck and gets the backhand shot away. And a big save there by Porter to keep this a one goal game. Lumberjacks change their defensive pairing as Brandon gets ready to take the draw against Clark. Clark wins it back to the point. Ford with the shot, that goes off a body of Talbot in front. Now played out in front again. And the Cougars couldn't quite get a stick on it. Here's Coleman coming out to center now. He'll dump it down into the Cougar zone. Played all the way around the far wall. And now pinching in from the point, Ryan Hopkins. He takes the shot, steered over to the corner. Clark loses his stick in the process. He'll get it back now Is as the puck is in behind the net. Played out in front, intended for Huskins but doesn't connect. Now there's a chance. And that one again steered just wide. Huskins now trying to find it in his feet. He can't, but the shot taken by Brennan. And that steered aside. Another shot, another save there by Frazier. Now Talbot with a shot, that goes way wide. And the puck comes up the wall at the far side for Huskins. Working against Allen. Coming in to help out as well is Coleman. Now there's another one. That one gets deflected way up high into the air. Goes into the corner and Clark will send it down the ice and relieve some of the pressure and get a line change with 5.55 left to go here in period number one. The Cougars with the only goal so far, but the Lumberjacks certainly buzzing to try and find an equalizer here as we reach about two thirds of the way through period number one. Cook gets waved out of the faceoff circle. Woodworth comes in to take the draw. Loses that draw against Rutterham. Now along the near wall, down below the goal line, Lamborn gets it out to Cook. Cook can't get a shot away as he took a bump just as the puck came. And coming out with it there is O'Neill. O'Neill dumps it in, back to get it there for the Lumberjacks is Harlow. He wraps it around the wall. Now it comes back down to the near or far side corner. Up ahead for Lamborn, but he gets his pocket picked with a nice play there by Seymour. All the way around to the near side, Cook. He gets a bumped and the puck goes to Harlow. He'll take it to the far side, but waiting for it at the line there was LaFrenz. LaFrenz holds it in, but now the Lumberjacks will be able to get it out. Cook gets a piece of that puck, so it's not an icing. Hustling back to get to it there is LaFrenz, but he's met immediately there by, uh, that was uh, Lamborn. Now the puck comes to the line, held in, shot taken, but it's blocked by LaFrenz, and LaFrenz will carry it out. 
Pushes the puck up as far as the Lumberjack blue line. And now it's played across to the near side for Kyle Hopkins. His pass ends up going all the way through and down the ice. LaFrenz working to get back to it there before Mayer can get on it. But Mayer has Wicker with him as well as Rayfuse. Rayfuse gets the puck, plays it back to the line. There's a shot. Deflected a couple times on its way in. And then Frazier able to cover up. Takes a bit of a whack on the glove from Rayfuse, which again draws a reaction from a couple of Cougar players. With 4.28 left to go here in period number one. Puck along the near side wall. It comes to Zwicker. Actually, it gets beyond Zwicker and goes to Hopkins. Kyle Hopkins. His shot gets sent down low after it got deflected wide. Now back to the line again. There's a shot from the point from Connors. And Frazier able to steer that one aside. Now back down below the goal line. Ray Fuse in there. Also coming in, though, for the Cougars was White. Puck comes back to White now. He has some time to get things organized. He'll flip it out to center. Right on to Kyle Hopkins. He'll turn it back up the other way. Soller waiting for it there. He... Plays it up to Christmas. Back to White. And down the length of the ice. And that'll be an icing as not getting a piece of that puck was Ryan McMullen. So we'll get an icing call against the John L. Jim Cougars with 3.41 left to go here in the opening period. 1-0 the lead for the Cougars against the South Shore Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks with the record of 1-0 coming into this game. Cougars with a record of 0 and 1. Hopkins, Ryan with the shot from the point. Now the puck played back out to center. Coming back to pick up is Brandon. He'll play it back over to Ryan Hopkins. Long lead pass to the line broken up there. Now coming back in again is Allen. He throws it towards the net. Initial save made, puck still loose. And it's out and down the ice. Not hard enough for an icing. As back to get it there is Parker Hutchings. He plays it ahead, misses Allen with that pass, and so it's dumped right back in onto the goaltender. And back to get it here is James Jobes. Jobes goes to make a pass. That's intercepted. And the centering attempt coming from Sam Tanner gets knocked away by the stick of one of the Cougar players. To the line, Hopkins gets it back down low. Coming into the near side, Clark. Gets it to the line and out as Harlow had to back off. Plays it across for Ryan Hopkins, who will dump it back in again. Coming way out to the side of his net, Frazier, but he couldn't get a glove on it. And now instead coming out with the puck is Drew McIntyre. He'll dump it in. Coming out to play it there is Porter. He sets it up there for Harlow. Passed ahead. Now Woodworth. But the pass for Woodworth intercepted by Seymour and he'll dump it back in again. 2.12 left to go in the opening frame. Ryan Hopkins. And if anybody knows, I'm assuming the Hopkins are brothers or cousins. Just something about it. The way they both play tells me they're related. But if anybody knows for sure and wants to share that information, by all means, share it on Twitter. Puck played ahead. Out to center. Ryan will send it back in. If I'm just using a player's first name, it's not because I'm trying to be overly familiar, but with Ryan Hopkins and Kyle Hopkins, sometimes for the sake of saving a little bit of time, I'll just refer to them by their first name. Face-off taken there between White, or between uh, Rudderham, rather, and Zwicker. Puck ends up rolling in onto Porter and he'll cover up and hang on for a faceoff. 139 left to go. And again, if you want to tweet me, it's Petter PC underscore sports. Send me a tweet with the uh, with either with a piece of that a piece of information like that or just your thoughts on the broadcast. By all means, share that at any time. Puck comes back to the line. There's a shot that gets blocked by Rayfuse, and the puck goes off of Rayfuse and all the way up over the glass and out of play. And uh, Dylan Rayfuse looks like he took that one off the top of the foot. And that part of the skate, there's not quite as much padding in it as it needs to have a little bit more flexibility. So that certainly was uncomfortable. There's another shot. That one got deflected and it went up over the glass and out of play. Last touched by a Cougar 
says the referee. So the faceoff will come out to center. 91 seconds left to go here in the first period. Brandon taking the draw there against Clark. Clark wins it by pushing it ahead and takes it all the way down into the corner before he gets rubbed into the boards. Now four players battling down below the goal line there. It comes loose to the side of the net. Trying the wrap around there was uh, Allen, but it ended up getting deflected up into the glass, still in play. Now up the wall, gets to the line, kept in there by Soller. Comes back to Soller again. He can't hold the line that second time as Coleman was able to help push it out. We're into the final minute, and here comes McIntyre with a shot that goes just wide. Now Coleman, he'll bring it out to center. He's got uh, Huskins right with him. Tried to make the pass through to Huskins, but that was a little bit in front of him. Now Woodworth, he gets tripped up, and that will draw a penalty. And the Cougars will go shorthanded for the second time this game. As it appears it's going to be Jackson Ford who's going to go off again. Ford took the first penalty of the game against the Cougars. Now back in the box for a second time, this time for the trip. And the Lumberjacks 0 for 1 with the man advantage in this game, 2 for 3 with the man advantage overall. The Hopkin boys are cousins. Okay, I had a feeling they were related. Thank you very much, Steve Cook, for that information. Puck sent down the length of the ice here as the power play started with 37 seconds left to go here in the period. So provided there's no goal coming up in the next little bit, we will see it carry over into period two. Here's Huskins with a shot and the save made there by goaltender Lucas Frazier. A big save on a good shot from the top of the faceoff circle there by Kiefer Huskins. And a nice save. Power play still underway. Neither side wins that draw cleanly. Finally, it's played back to Woodworth. He goes across to Ryan Hopkins. Shot taken, save, or blocked in front. Now the puck out to center ice. Here comes Seymour. He takes the shot from long range. It goes over the crossbar, and that will do it for period number one. Shots on goal in the period. Lumberjacks outshoot the Cougars 12-8, but the only goal, Drew McIntyre on the power play. His first goal, first point of the tournament, assisted by Reese Allen and Connor White. That the power play goal at 349. We talked about the fact that special teams were going to be important in this game. We've only had one goal. It was scored on the power play, and the struggles of the Cougars special teams Going 0 for 1 on the power play, only killing off one of three yesterday. So far, they've killed off their only penalty. They've scored on their only power play. And they are 37 seconds into killing this second penalty that they have taken here in the game this afternoon. Teams switch ends as we get ready for the second period. And again, if you're not familiar with... Nova Scotia Major Bantam Hockey League practices. It's two 15 minute periods separated by just a quick break and a switch of ends. Then we get the flood. Then we get the third period, which is the full 20 minutes. The traditional length of period that everybody's used to from watching all those games on TV. Off of the face off, Allen able to get the puck all the way down the ice and Ryan, son of Jeff, Hopkins takes it out from behind his net. Meanwhile, Kyle is the son of Greg. Puck down into the corner. And Pattengale gets it as far as the line, but not out. Sent down the length of the ice yet again. And Jeff, thank you very much for the kind words about the broadcast and to everybody else who's sending those kind words. With it now is Kyle Hopkins, son of Greg. He gets it to Woodworth, back to Kyle again. Kyle gets it ahead almost for Ryan, but that was broken up by Pattengale. Then Pattengale gets his stick knocked out of his hand, but the penalty is going to go against the Cougars. They're going to call it on the Cougars for the... No, they're going to call it on Hopkins for the slash, which is what I thought it was going to be. 
but they didn't blow it down immediately, even though the Lumberjacks still had the puck, which is what got me and everybody else in this building confused. <laughs> Almost a big oops there. So Ryan Hopkins will take the slashing penalty for knocking the stick of Pattengale out of his hand. And we'll play some four on four here for about 20 more seconds. And then the Cougars, I misspoke earlier, they will have their third power play. They're one for two so far, as that earlier power play was technically two power plays because it was a double minor. But this penalty to Hopkins for the slash coming at 56 seconds of the period. Centering pass intended for Brennan, that's broken up, and out come the Cougars. They are now on their power play, as mentioned, their third power play of the game. They are one for two so far in this game, and there's some good forechecking, creating possession for the Cougars. They jam away at it, but able to cover it up and hang on for a faceoff is Porter. 45 seconds gone in the penalty to Ryan Hopkins, 115 left in that penalty, 13-19 left to go here in the third period as the Lumberjacks now 0 for 2 at the man advantage today, 2 for 4 on the tournament. Fourth power play of the tournament here for the Cougars. They are now 1 for 3 after scoring that power play goal earlier this afternoon. Puck gets to the line and hops out just beyond White. He'll go back and pick up and very quickly turns it to his defense partner and gets the return pass right away. Now White working his way ahead, goes to make a pass but the player he was trying to pass it to had just dropped his stick and was in the process of bending down to pick it up. That was, uh, I believe it was uh, McIntyre and the pass now comes to McIntyre. He takes the shot and it's played out to center and White back to get it. White gains the red line, dumps it in. 35 seconds left to go in the man advantage. Puck comes into the near corner. Clark can't get to it ahead of uh, Harlow, but now Harlow and Allen, as well as White, or as well as Clark, are all in there tangled up. With it now, McIntyre, he throws it through the low slot, goes all the way to the far side, and then Clark goes to play it down low. Knocked down there by Talbot, he gets it as far as the line. Shot through some traffic in front, ends up coming to the near side corner. Now it's played out to center, just five seconds left in the man advantage. Here's Soller with it now. He'll bring it back across the blue line. Soller into the zone as we're back to five on five. Gets it in front for Allen. Allen can't get a good shot away as his stick was tied up. Now Allen trying to get a pass out. That's not going to work. And the puck will come to Ryan Hopkins, but we'll get a stoppage as the net in behind Ian Porter ends up getting knocked off of its moorings with 3.07. Gone here in period number two. A reminder that for both of these teams, this is their first game of the day. They are playing twice today, each of them. The Cougars will be back on the ice at 6 o'clock when they take on the Pro Hockey Life Harbor Storm. And for the South Shore Lumberjacks, they'll face the hosts, the Wherewell Bombers, at 8 o'clock this evening. Trying to get things settled down there is LaFrenz. He's having trouble with that puck. Finally, he's able to get it ahead there to O'Neill. O'Neill able to find Seymour. Here comes Seymour trying to get a step around Connors. Seymour cuts to the middle. Save made by Porter. And the puck rolls across to the near side. Now Pattengale can't hold it in at the line as it hops past him. LaFrenz, the last line of defense, gets the puck pushed ahead. And McMullen will dump it in. It comes off the end board. Settled down there by Porter so he can get it to Connors. Connors plays it up and working his way out with it is Hoskins. He plays it, or Huskins, excuse me. He plays it ahead, and now the Cougars in their own zone. Backing up with it is Pettengale. He's got a man all over him. That was Brandon on the forecheck. Now the puck comes back up to O'Neill. He gets it to the line, and now it comes out with a good second effort. But then the Cougars are forced right back deep into their own zone again. 4.15 gone in period number two. Played to the line, held in by Kyle Hopkins. He takes the shot. It goes wide, comes off the end boards. Ryan Hopkins now will send it off the end boards near side. LaFrenz gets to it first, gets it as far as the line, but Kyle keeps it in. Now cutting towards the middle was Rayfuse. He tried to get a shot away. There were too many bodies in front. Zwicker now takes a bump from McMullen. 
Zwicker gets back on the puck, tried to play it out for Rayfuse, but couldn't find the connection. Now Zwicker working hard in the corner, pokes the puck up, and it gets over to McMullen, who will send it down the length of the ice, and the Cougars will take the change with five, or just under five minutes gone here in the second period. And the scoreline still as it has been since the 349 mark of the first period. Just the one goal so far in this game. And that belongs to the John Old Jim Cougars, courtesy of Drew McIntyre. Ryan Hopkins has the pass to come to him from Woodworth. He had a little bit of trouble controlling it, and he had Hutchings coming in on him in a hurry. Now the puck played off the top of the boards in front of the bench of the South Shore Lumberjacks, so that'll draw a whistle, and the puck will come all the way back down into the Cougar zone. Face off to the left of the goaltender, Lucas Frazier. Played ahead. Hopkins plays it into the far corner. It looked like he was trying to get the pass to Cook, but didn't quite connect. Now Cook with the puck at the far wall, trying to send it down into the corner to Woodworth. Woodworth has it knocked away from him by Clark as the two captains are both in there. Now McIntyre will send it out to center. Ryan Hopkins gets to it, backs up with it, plays it ahead. As far as Jobes, Jobes sends it back to Talbot as the defensemen for each team play pass with each other for a bit. Now Clark dumps it in down below the goal line. It bounces just short of the wall. And now coming out, here comes Woodworth. Woodworth coming into the zone, but uh, Lamborn not quite able to keep that foot on side, doing everything he could to try and stretch that foot out but had too much momentum as Woodworth was forced to make an extra little move there at the blue line. Between that and Lamborn's momentum resulting in the offside. Neither side winning that faceoff draw cleanly. Finally, the puck comes back to Harlow. He works it up the near wall. Coleman then takes a big bump from Rutterham, but the Lumberjacks still with possession. There's a shot. From Huskins, it goes wide, comes all the way back to Harlow. Plays it back down low. Now the puck along the near side wall. There's a shot from Brannon as Seymour looks to be in a little bit of discomfort. Puck comes off the end boards. Not able to cover it was Frazier. Then trying to get a wraparound was Brannon as Frazier was on the wrong side of his crease. But the puck rolled off of his stick. Now we'll have the, an icing against the Cougars. As I didn't see what exactly happened, but Seymour was holding the back of his head and looked to be in some discomfort. 8.22 left to go here in period two. And quick reminder of some of the sponsors that we have in this tournament who deserve a great big thank you for their help in making this tournament happen, including Geno's Bakery, Swiss Chalet, Barb's Diner in Westville, one of the great local restaurants we have here in Pictou County. Of course, Swiss Chalet, one of the great chain restaur restaurants we have here. Je Geno's Bakery over in Stellarton. Incredible fresh baked foods there. Winning the draw, getting the puck all the way around the boards were the Cougars as LaFrenz got it there, but it was held in at the line by Kyle Hopkins. Now to the line near side and Brandon able to get it back down low again. LaFrenz trying to circle away from Coleman, gets it up the wall to Allen. Allen deflects it towards the center of the ice. Woodworth there. Now Kyle Hopkins with the shot, chasing it down in the corner is Connors. Or was uh, Coleman rather. Now it's Connors with the puck at the near side. He takes a bump from Allen, but got it down to Huskins. Shot taken, that goes wide. Huskins back on it near side. Takes a bump. Puck comes to the line and out as McIntyre tried to work his way down, but unfortunately for the Cougars, that'll result in an icing as we're five seconds short of the halfway mark of this second period. Some of our other sponsors, Sobeys, who of course have their head offices, the National Grocery Train with their head offices right here in Pictou County. TRA, Wear Well Garments, the major sponsor, title sponsor of our local major Bantam team, the Wear Well Bombers. Zwicker with the puck there. There's a shot and making the save and hanging on for another face-off there, Lucas Frazier. 
TD Waterhouse, of course, a great investment firm there. Sam's Pizza, one of our incredible local pizza operations. And if you've never had Pictou County's unique style of pizza, you have to try it. Sam's Pizza and Pictou County Pizza, two of our local sponsors of this event, both making that Pictou County style pizza with the brown sauce. Unlike any pizza you'll get anywhere else in the world, and it is so, so good. Zwicker gets the puck back into the zone with 7-10 left to go. Goes out and now back in again, and now back out again as they play a little bit of ping pong on either side of the blue line. Now Woodworth, he'll get it up to Zwicker. Here comes Zwicker working his way down the right wing. Takes a shot, save made there by Frazier as he steers it over to the left side corner. Getting to it now is LaFrenz. He'll try and work it up the wall to Allen, but Woodworth in the way. Zwicker with the shot and another nice save there by Frazier. Out come the Cougars. Coming through, here's McIntyre. Nice play there by Ryan Hopkins to knock it off McIntyre's stick. And the Jacks get possession back. Out comes, that is uh, Cook. He gets it knocked away from him at the blue line. Back to the Lumberjack line. Now pass intended for Huskins, that's broken up. Woodworth getting on it though. Woodworth now gets bumped off the puck by McIntyre. And Coleman able to get it in deep. Hustling back to get onto that puck there is Jackson Ford. He works it up to McIntyre, gets it back out to center for Allen. Allen chips it around Harlow, but couldn't maintain control. Now Coleman will dump it in right onto Frazier. He'll steer it into the corner for Ford. Ford plays it up the wall. And then McIntyre will send it down the ice. It's losing steam, so it won't be an icing. Harlow gets to the puck, plays it around, and it comes all the way out to center where Coleman was waiting for it. He gains the red line, dumps the puck in. Going in after it there was Huskins, but he couldn't get onto that puck before the Cougar defenseman was there. Now Tanner will send it back into the zone. Huskins quickly comes out, touches up. But that'll give Ford time to go back, get to the puck. He plays it up the wall. It's held in there at the line by Barry. And now in behind the net. Ford on it again. Plays it up. And out comes Hutchings. Hutchings sends it down into the Lumberjack zone. Going in after it. Gets to it. Gives to Christmas. Out in front. And a couple of whacks at it there by McMullen. Now McMullen again with the shot. That one goes wide. In behind the net, Hutchings, he couldn't get to it. Puck comes all the way back to Jobes. He'll take the shot, and a glove save made by Porter. 4.50 left to go here in the second period, and still that one nothing scoreline. A couple other sponsors we should mention include Sacco Automotive, Proudfoot Home Hardware, our local home hardware chains, the Nova Scotia Major Midget and Major Bantam Leagues, both being a big part of making sure this tournament happens. McGilvery Fuel. Pioneer Cole and English Jewelers. Puck played into the zone, now back out of the zone. As trying to get a stick on it there was Mayer. He ends up getting it ahead to Kyle Hut Hopkins who dumps it in. Puck comes off the side of the net and now coming out with it is Seymour. Seymour working his way in. Seymour trying to get around Connors. Cuts towards the middle, takes a shot, save made. And the puck rolls out to Rayfuse. Rayfuse coming back the other way. Seymour hard on the back check. Forces the turnover. And now it's played out to center though. Connor dumps it right back in again. With it now, that was LaFrenz. He gets it ahead. Now pass up for Rutterham. He tried to feed it to Seymour. Seymour just chops it and it goes right into Connors. Rutterham, Seymour, Rayfuse, Brandon, Connors all in there. Brandon comes out with it. Plays it to the far side for Kyle Hopkins. He works it up the wall and it ends up getting stopped by Soller. Soller ends up nearly running into his own man, Rutterham. Then tried to make a pass through to Allen. That doesn't connect because Brandon was in the way. Now Huskins. He gets knocked down as he pushes the puck down low. White will get to it. Wraps it around to the far side. Held in at the line there by Kyle Hopkins. Now in behind the net. White overskates it. And the puck was played out in front, but nobody there in a white jersey for the Lumberjacks. 3.17 left to go here in period two. Puck dumped back in 
Frazier comes out of his net, plays it to the near side corner. Nobody there except Huskins, but he had nobody to get help from. Now there's Woodworth with a chance. He forced a turnover. Coleman scores! Frazier made the initial save, but nobody picked up Brennan Coleman at 11.58 of period number two. Coleman will get his second goal, second point of the tournament. Luke Woodworth should get an assist for the initial shot. And we'll just wait and see if there is a second assist on that one. But now with three minutes left in period number two, we're all tied up at one. As we wait for the official announcement of this goal, but here comes Woodworth again. Woodworth tried to get it through for Lamborn. Lamborn again puts it through the crease and it goes to the far wall. McIntyre behind the net, LaFrenz. Woodworth does get the only assist on that goal, so it is indeed Brennan Coleman's second goal, second point of the tournament, assisted by Woodworth at 11.58. Puck dumped in to the Cougar zone. Into the corner there. Now a pass intended from Cook for Lamborn, but that gets broken up, and out come the Cougars. Dumped in hard into the Lumberjack zone. Allen gets on it at the near side, sends it in behind the net intended for McIntyre. McIntyre had overskated it, got back to it, but now Cook has it and will carry it up. Gets it up to Lamborn. He'll just deflect it down into the Lumberjack zone, or into the Cougar zone, excuse me, and go off on a change. LaFrenz tried to dump it out, but it ended up going right back onto his stick again. Now Allen comes out, and here comes Allen. Allen takes the shot, save made, and covering up will be Ian Porter with 1.36 left to go here, period number two. That final group of sponsors we need to talk about, Hockey Nova Scotia, Grant Thornton, Combex, Citadel Coin, Kaylee Honda, Cabot Shipping, Blue Wave Energy and Ultramar, Bike Monkey, and Anchor Toyota. Puck played up there by Kyle Hopkins. He gets it ahead to Mayer, who got it out, intended for Rayfuse, but that was broken up. Now back into the Lumberjack zone again. Here's Seymour. Nice move by Seymour, but the puck rolled just a little bit too far from him. Couldn't get a shot away. Now Soller at the point. His shot gets blocked by Connors comes to the near side wall. Down into the corner, Seymour there. McMullen coming in to help out. Four players in the corner battling for that puck. Coming out with it now is Seymour. Tries to get it in front there for O'Neill, but the pass ends up going through him. Now in behind the net, McMullen. He loses it to Brannon. Coming in to help out again is Seymour. He gets the puck back. Now at the far wall, O'Neill. He takes a bump from Kyle Hopkins, Seymour comes in and scores! What a shot by Riley Seymour finding the five hole on Ian Porter with 42.6 seconds left to go here in period number two. And it is two to one for the Cougars. Riley Seymour, his first goal, second point of the tournament. I believe we'll see an assist go to O'Neill. Wait for the official word though to be sure as the puck is played off the glass and down the ice. That should be an icing. No, it is not. As we get confirmation that O'Neill does indeed have the only assist on that goal. So again, Riley Seymour, first goal, second point of the tournament from O'Neill at 14-18 of period number two. Now we're down to the last 10 seconds. Puck held in at the line there, sent down into the corner. Pattingale gets to it, he works it back up the wall and that will do it for period number two. And in this game number seven, we have now had in seven games, seven games where the scoreline has been either 3-1 or 2-1 at the end of two periods. It has been 3-1 five times, or sorry, 
I stand corrected. It's been 3-1 or 2-1 six of the seven times. It was 2-0 in the last game between the Gulls and the Storm. In that period, we had two goals scored. The first one coming at 11.58. This goal by Brennan Coleman, his second goal, second point of the tournament, assisted by Luke Woodworth. That made it 1-1. But then Riley Seymour, his first goal, second point of the tournament, gave the Cougars back the lead, assisted by Logan O'Neill. That made it 2-1 at 14.18. Shots on goal in the second period. The Lumberjacks outshoot the Cougars 8-6. to six. The two-period total, the Lumberjacks are outshooting the Cougars 20-14. to 14. Both teams have had some power play opportunities. The Lumberjacks 0 for 2, Cougars 1 for 3. And your score at the end of 40 minutes of play, or end of 30 minutes of play, excuse me, is the Cape Breton John L. Jim Cougars 2, South Shore Lumberjacks won. We're going to take a break. We'll come back, get you ready for the third period in just a few minutes. You are watching Nova Scotia Major Bantam Hockey League Provincial Tournament action here on 360 Live.
Welcome back as we get you ready for the start of the third period here in this game between the Cape Breton John Will Jim Cougars and the South Shore Lumberjacks. Another very entertaining game here at this Nova Scotia Major Bandom Hockey League Provincial Tournament. Seems like we really haven't had a, a blowout game as of yet. I mean, yes, we had a South Shore victory over the Rangers by a margin of 5-1. to one. We had a Gulls victory over the Storm by a score of 4 to nothing, And yeah, a four-goal game is a comfortable win, certainly. But you look at that South Shore game, it was 2-1 to one going into the third period. And then three goals with the clincher making it 5-2 to two with just under or just under two minutes left. And then that 4 nothing game that we had just earlier this morning. Again, it was 2 nothing going into the third period. And then... A goal around seven and a half minutes in and a goal with about five minutes left to seal the deal in that one. So no games that have been decided, certainly before the third period. And can't ask for much more than that when you've got seven great major bantam hockey teams playing for the right to move on to the Atlantics. And we got to give a shout out to the Gulls and their organizing committee for the Atlantics as they are getting ready to host that event down at St. Margaret's Bay coming up April 4th through the 7th. Of course, that same weekend, there are five Atlantic Championship Hockey tournaments taking place throughout Atlantic Canada, a couple of which will determine teams to go on to represent the Atlantic region at national championships, the TELUS Cup and the ESSO Cup for major midget and female midget respectively. And uh, should be some great hockey left here in Atlantic Canada for a couple more weeks yet before we are all said and done until we get of course into spring hockey. And that's a whole other kettle of fish and then and then it's time to get ready for baseball season because we've all heard the uh, the importance of being a multi-sport athlete, not focusing on one sport 365 days of the year. So many great athletes have touted the importance of being a multi-sport athlete, of being multi-focused especially at this age for these young players so that they don't burn out by the time they hit junior as the thunder of the sticks and gloves on the boards indicates the third period is underway and the lumberjacks get it down into the cougar zone immediately puck picked up by cook he'll play it down the wall there for huskins trying to get it back up the wall to cook but a lot of traffic in the way. Now the puck comes to White. He'll bring it out. Nice pass there from White to Clark. Clark stops, takes the shot. That's steered aside by Porter. Now White pinching in. That comes all the way around the boards to Soller. He sends it back down low. Back up the wall there from Talbot out to center. And back to get it will be White into his own zone. White, his pass intended for McIntyre. McIntyre couldn't knock it down. Ryan Hopkins does. Plays it over to his cousin, Kyle. Up ahead, intended for Lamborn. That pass just a little bit off, and Soller got a piece of it, but not enough to stop it from going down deep into his own zone. Puck gets to the line and out, and now here comes McIntyre. He's got Allen with him. McIntyre, nice drop pass for Allen, and what a goal! Reese Allen... At 110 of the third period, doubles up the lead. Reese Allen, his first goal, third point of the tournament. Drew McIntyre will get an assist. But what an absolute snipe off the stick of Reese Allen. His first goal, third point of this tournament, coming at 110. And it seems to come to fruition again. The first five minutes of the third period. Oh, so important. And for the Cougars, they do get a goal here today in that time frame. Lamborn now. 
Dumps it in. McIntyre gets the only assist on that one. So again, it's Allen's first goal, third point of the tournament, assisted by McIntyre at 110. And it's now a 3-1 lead for the John Old Jim Cougars. Puck comes all the way around the boards to O'Neill. He gets it out to center. Barry flips it back in again. Rudderham now per works it up the wall and back out. Barry gets it again. Goes to play it back in. It goes off of O'Neill. Now Mayer trying to get it in. Mayer gets knocked down by Rudderham and O'Neill will play it back to LaFrenz. Back ahead for O'Neill and O'Neill dumps it down deep in the lumberjack zone where Harlow wraps it all the way around to the far point. LaFrenz, <laughs> it wasn't pretty but he kept it in the zone. Now down low Seymour as the net almost looked like it wasn't even pegged down at all. It came out so easily there. And now they get it set back up here with 2.15 gone in the third period. Here at the Wellness Center, we do have those drill-in pegs as well. We use those for the local Junior A hockey team, the week's Junior A Crushers. But we're just using the more traditional pegs here in this one. Puck sent down the ice. Cook hustling to get after it. Gets it to Woodworth. There's a shot and a big save made by Lucas Frazier. A huge save there for Frazier. And did the puck end up inside his gear? Looks like it did. It's Frazier trying to find it there. Not sure how exactly it ended up in amongst his padding, but he's digging around there to try and find it. <laughs> As, hey, there we go, I think we've got the puck. Yes, we find the puck. Kind of an important detail to not have him trying to continue to play with a puck in amongst his equipment. As Lucas Frazier now, that is his 20th save on 21 shots so far here today and now have it there's a big play not by Frazier but by Soller to get the puck out of his crease and it's dumped down the ice Clark hustling to get to it he plays it out towards the front goes off of Porter and now coming all the way around to the near side Cook goes to clear it but it goes right on to Clark and he scores Brandon Clark at 2.48 of this third period. Extends the lead even further. That's his second goal of the tournament. And that makes it four to one. A huge goal for Clark to make this now a three goal game. And I believe that'll be unassisted as it was put right on his stick. You hate to point out guys but they do give McIntyre an assist although it looked to me from this angle like the puck was put right onto his stick by Will Cook but they'll give McIntyre an assist anyway and now it is a 4-1 game it was 2-1 coming into this third period and two goals here in the first two minutes and 48 seconds have broken this one wide open. Puck played out and down the length of the ice. Hustling in to get to it there is Coleman. In behind the net, plays it out in front there. Trying to get a decent shot away, but the puck ends up underneath Frazier. And he'll hang on. For another faceoff, 322 gone here in period number three. And the Cougars again with that four to one lead. And the Cougars now with 
this lead as it currently stands, their plus minus, or their goal uh, differential, or goal ratio, is at an even 500 because they've scored six and given up six now. And of course that does come into play as a tiebreaker depending on how things play out. Cook with the puck there, had, couldn't chip it past Pettengale. It comes out to center and then gets dumped back in again. Trying to get to it over at the far side there. Huskins, he's met by LaFrenz. LaFrenz has had a pretty good game on the back end there for the Cougars. Now LaFrenz ties up his man, that was Woodworth, and then an attempt at a D to D pass from Harlow to Barry. That was a little bit off target, and so the Lumberjacks had to come out and tag up. LaFrenz now gets it down into the Lumberjack zone. Harlow will play it ahead. Having trouble finding it in his feet is Huskins. Now he finds it and gets it to the Cougar line where waiting for it was LaFrenz. He plays it to the near side there for Pattengale. Coming up, there's a shot from O'Neill that steered away. Now Rutterham to O'Neill behind the net. He tries to stuff it in. And Porter able to close the door on that wraparound attempt. O'Neill and P Huskins battling along the wall. Puck comes loose to Ryan Hopkins. He'll play it to Harlow. Harlow gets it ahead there to Huskins. As far as the line, then turned back the other way by LaFrenz, but that's picked up now by Ryan Hopkins. Hopkins coming in, takes the shot, save made by Frazier. And coming out with it now, here is White. White dumps it down into the lumberjack zone, wrapped all the way around to the far side. Rudderham there. He loses it to Ryan Hopkins, and Hopkins will play it ahead and out to center. O'Neill waiting for it there. Will bring it back in across the blue line. O'Neill trying to work his way around Talbot, who fell. Talbot able to get back up, though, and tie things up in the corner. 14-20 left to go here in the third. Puck gets to the line and down the length of the ice, and that will lead to an icing call against the Cougars or against the Lumberjacks, excuse me, with four, or 5.45 gone here in period number three, and the scoreline favoring those Cougars by a four to one margin. Don't forget our next game. It's the first of the set of third games for each team, as the Wearwell Bombers will take on the Excel Physio. Delayed offside against the Lumberjacks that will allow Clark to send the puck up the ice. It goes right to Kyle Hopkins. He plays it across to Connors. He tries to get it ahead to uh, Coleman, but that's broken up. And back into their own zone are the Jacks. Here's Lamborn. His pass ahead. That gets broken up by Allen. As the there, Connors ends up losing an edge as he was going back to get the puck. It comes to the line. Ford with a big shot. Brandon got a piece of that one. Then Allen trying to turn and fire. That one gets blocked as well. And the puck will be sent down the length of the ice. And it will squirt just past the net for an icing call. 13-26 left to go here in the third period. Again, the next game, the host Bombers take on Excel Physio. Next game for each of these teams will be later this evening. For the John L. Jim Cougars, they'll take on Pro Hockey Life Harbor Storm at six. For the South Shore Lumberjacks, they'll take on the host Bombers tonight at eight. Puck is dumped in and just hanging on to it there is Ian Porter. 13-17 now left to go here in period number three. And off of the face-off, Christmas and Woodworth were tied up with each other. Puck goes into the corner where there's now four players in there fighting for it. It comes loose. The two Lumberjacks, though, end up knocking each other down inadvertently. But the pass from Christmas back to the line for LaFrenz ended up handcuffing LaFrenz a little bit there. And it brought it out to center. Now Cook, but Woodworth was in offside. At 7.09 of period number three, 4-1 the lead for the team from Cape Breton, the John L. Jim Cougars, over the team who plays out of the 
Lunenburg County Lifestyle Center, the South Shore Lumberjacks. Draw one by Clark, back to Soller. Played ahead, trying to dump it in there was Allen, but it was knocked down by Ryan Hopkins. Now ahead intended for Mayer. It does get to Mayer on a second effort. And now trying to work his way in is McDermott. McDermott couldn't do anything with that one. And out come the Cougars again. White dumps it in. Gets beyond Porter as he comes out. It rings all the way around to McDermott. McDermott, though, gets his pocket picked there by Clark. Clark gets rubbed into the boards by Hopkins. Now it's back to, Cl to McDermott again. Again, he's met immediately. There's a shot. It's blocked by traffic in front. Another shot. And yes, it did go in. Just up underneath the crossbar. Allen gets his second of the game. Second of this period at 7.53. And second of the tournament. And it's now 5-1 to one for the Cougars over the Lumberjacks. And call this a bit of a surprise here that the Cougars have stormed out for three goals here in this third period. Here's Woodworth coming in. Trying to stem the flow a little bit here. Gets it across, but then Huskins couldn't get the shot away. McIntyre and Clark get the assist for McIntyre. That's his third assist of this game, fourth point of the game. And then Ford will go off for a penalty. His third penalty of this game for roughing after the whistle. This one coming at 8.09 of period number three. After Ford knocked down his man at the side of the net after the whistle. So a third power play of the game for the Lumberjacks. They are 0 for 2 with the man advantage so far. And if ever there was a must convert for the Jacks, this would be it. Woodworth with the shot, trying to go top corner, but able to get his arm up there was Frazier. Now Cook in the corner. Skates it out of the corner, up to the half wall, back to the line there for Hopkins to Woodworth near side. Back across, intended for Cook, but it goes through his feet, comes to Brennan, and his shot off the backhand ends up going just a bit wide. Now here comes Allen. Takes it away from Hopkins, gets the shot away, and Porter with a big save. Now Allen trying to tie up Hopkins. Here's it from his bench, how much they appreciate his forechecking efforts on the penalty kill. Ryan Hopkins brings it into the zone, loses control of the puck, and it's sent down the length of the ice, coming out of the net to play it there. Porter, long lead pass for Hopkins. Ryan Hopkins into the zone. Plays it near side for cousin Kyle. Kyle with the shot. And the save made by Jacob Frazier, or Lucas Frazier, excuse me. With 42 seconds left in the man advantage, 10.33 left to go here in period number three. And the Cougars leading it by four. Kyle Hopkins with the shot. That goes off a leg, comes to the near side wall. Ryan gets it, plays it back to Kyle again. Across to the far side for Woodworth. Back to Kyle Hopkins. His shot, deflected, goes wide. Ryan Hopkins picks up. Ryan skating it up the boards. Fakes like he's going to pass to Kyle. Now skates it down, puts it towards the front of the net. But the Cougars will come away with it, and out they come shorthanded. Getting tripped up there was, I believe that was Seymour. He had Christmas with him. Now Ryan Hopkins drops it off for Woodworth. Back to Hopkins. We're back to five on five here. Under 10 minutes left to go in the third period. Now here's Ford. He knocked the puck away from Kyle Hopkins. Ford coming in. Ford, and what a poke check there by Porter. A big poke check at a key time to keep it a four goal game. If it becomes five, that's just about unbeatable. But a big save made there on the poke check by Ian Porter. Lumberjacks now with it in the zone. Hopkins with the shot. That doesn't get through the traffic in front. 
and out comes Christmas with it. Here's Christmas, he tees it up. That comes off the inboards, almost right to Parker Hutchings, but it hopped over his stick and he would have had a wide open net. Now coming back out the other way, Ray Fuse gets the move around one man, but ends up over skating the puck. LaFrenz will pick up, LaFrenz now brings it back into the Lumberjack zone, drops it off. As the intensity picking up here, that puck goes way up into the rafters and ends up hitting something high above the ice here at the Pictou County Wellness Center. So we'll get a stoppage with 8.49 left to go. And the John Old Jim Cougars with the 5-1 to one lead now. And that goal significant because it improves their goal ratio to above 500. They've now scored 7 and given up 6. Which means they're at around 5... 50 something I'm not doing the math in my head right off the top of the right off the bat right at the moment but I will get that number for you later if it becomes important across to the far side coming out with it now McMullen he'll flip it down into the corner first one to it will be Harlow Harlow can't do anything with that though it ends up coming to Hutchings he can't do anything with it either and now coming out with it, Woodworth. He gets it ahead to Mayer. Mayer dumps it in onto the goaltender, Frazier, who steered it into the corner, but Woodworth forechecking hard. Now the puck rolls out to Cook. He takes a shot. And I'm not sure if that caught glove or if that caught crossbar, but either way, it looked like it caught something and ended up not going in. Here's Rudderham with it now. Rudderham takes the shot. That goes off a stick and into the corner. Now up the wall for Cook. Ford pinching in. Knocks the puck away from Cook. McIntyre now. Rudderham with the deflection. And Porter will slow it down with 7.34. Left to go here in period number three. For the Lumberjacks, their goal differential or goal ratio right now is at exactly 500. As they've now scored six and given up six with the 5-1 victory and trailing 5-1. Losing his stick was McIntyre as it just dropped out of his hands, seemingly out of nowhere. Now Zwicker and Allen go into the corner hard. Puck comes out to Ryan Hopkins. Nice little move there. His shot gets blocked by Clark. Now Hutching, or Huskins Gets it across, shot taken there, and the save made off of the shot by Mayer with 6.59 left to go here in period number three. And a four goal lead for the Cape Breton John Old Jim Cougars. Zwicker taking the draw against McMullen, McMull or against O'Neill rather. He wins it into the corner, puck comes around to the near side. Five players in amongst the battle along the near wall. Just above the top of the face-off circle as far as the height within the zone goes. Now Zwicker, he gets bumped off the puck. And that will allow White to get it out. He plays it ahead for McMullen. Here comes McMullen. He gets the shot away. That goes wide. Now thrown towards the net. That one steered aside by Porter. Back to the line, Soller, he was looking for a deflection from Seymour, didn't get one. Now White will play it back down low. O'Neill in the corner, battling hard there with Connors. Puck works its way up the wall, Seymour in there. Seymour goes to play it down low, it does get back down into the corner. And O'Neill, he'll take it all the way around to the near side. O'Neill gets tripped up there by Connors, or by Kyle Hopkins. Now Connors will go back and pick up the puck. Around to the far side for Rayfuse. He gets it out to center, under six minutes left to go. Backing up with it there was McMullen. He played it off to his defenseman, now coming back forward. Here's Seymour with it. He takes a shot, that's steered aside by Porter. At the far wall there, Brandon has his man tied up. That's Seymour, Brandon and Seymour in on the battle. Connor's in there as well, as is McMullen. Puck comes back now to McIntyre. It was loose, chopped ahead by Brandon. Here comes Brandon. Delayed penalty coming up against the Cougars. And as they touch up, we will get the call. 
And we get the indication that it is a roughing penalty. And I believe that's 19 McIntyre going into the box. So the Lumberjacks, who it is indeed McIntyre. So the Lumberjacks, who are 0 for 3 with the man advantage here this afternoon, get their fourth opportunity. They're 2 for 5 when you put the whole tournament together. Coming in, there's a shot, and that goes just over the crossbar. Comes all the way around the glass and out to center. Ryan Hopkins goes to play it to Brandon, but Brandon, now we've got too many men as Brandon was coming off for a change, then saw the puck was right there, so came back out onto the ice, but Kyle Hopkins jumped out onto the ice at the same time, so that'll be a bench minor for too many men against the Lumberjacks at exactly 15 minutes, and Brandon will go over and serve it. This penalty coming at exactly 15 minutes, so we're gonna have a minute and 41 of four on four, and then a very brief power play for the Cougars. Right now, as we play four on four, Allen has the puck. His pass intended for Pattingale. That just a little bit off target. And now Woodworth and Ford going after the puck hard. Comes to Coleman. He gives to Woodworth. Woodworth now turns it back and heads up ice. Dumps the puck in near side. Comes off the end boards. Pattingale gets to it. Able to turn to get away from Woodworth. Pattingale now will... Take it out from behind his net on the left wing side and work his way up the left wing of the ice. Pattengale still working his way in against Connors. Now sends the puck behind the net for Clark. Clark takes a bump from Kyle Hopkins. Hopkins plays it up and out to center. Here's White with it as he backs up. 42 seconds left in the four on four. Puck comes back in across the blue line. Four players in there. With the puck tied up in the feet of Huskins. Now coming out with it. Here comes Clark. Clark trying to work his way through. Can't do so as Kyle Hopkins had him tangled up. And it's out to center. Soller now back to Clark again. Clark will dump it in. Comes off the end boards. Porter plays it around. Kyle Hopkins knocks it ahead for Cook. Eight seconds left in the four on four. Cook just dumps it in. Going back after it there was White, but he got knocked off the puck by Huskins. Huskins now loses control of it. It rolls to White. He'll play it back over to the near side, Soller. The Cougars on a very brief power play here after the first penalty had expired. Soller now dumps it in. It goes wide of the net, comes off the end boards. And we're back to five on five, under three minutes left to go in a four goal game. So, er, uh, Seymour. Tried to get that centering pass through. Doesn't quite get all the way to Allen. Now Allen in the corner. Has a couple of white jerseys on him. Allen loses control of the puck and is picked up there by Brennan. Brennan trying to play it ahead, but it got knocked into the wall as we get another scrum along the boards here. Now the puck to McIntyre. He tried to push it over into some empty space. Couldn't do so. And working ahead with it there is Tanner. Puck comes to Talbot now. To Ryan Hopkins, back to Talbot. Lead pass broken up by Soller. Tanner gets it again here, 2.10 left to go. Tanner bringing it in across the line. Tanner with the shot, that goes wide, comes off the end boards to McIntyre. McIntyre taking it back behind his own net. Circles the net and out he comes and here comes Drew McIntyre. McIntyre takes a bump, loses control of the puck. Then Barry flailed at it, but missed. Barry gets it back again, now goes to play it ahead for Tanner, a little too far in front of him. And it's out to center, but now back into the zone again. 140 left to go. Puck played off the wall to Pettingale at his own, cent his own line. Preston Pattengale into the zone. Pattengale still with it. Now tried to center it there for McMullen. And I think it was another nice save there by Porter. At least I believe that puck actually came in and got
Got on to Porter, and now Frazier will cover up as the puck sent down to the other end. 117 left to go here in period three, a 5 1 scoreline in favor of the Cougars. Safe to say, John Old Jim Cougars advance to 1 and 1 on the tournament, and the Lumberjacks will fall to 1 and 1. As with it there now, that was McDermott. He tried to center it. That goes off a body and in behind the net. Now McMullen will send it back up the other way. Comes off the end boards. Harlow around to McDermott. We're into the final minute here. Pass ahead for Lamborn. Lamborn trying to settle it down, but it gets away from him and it's picked up by Rudderham. Here comes Rudderham through center. Into the zone, but it's knocked away from him by Lamborn. Back out, 40 seconds left. Pattengale will play it across. LaFriends works it up the ice. Harlow now gets it ahead for McDermott. He couldn't control that pass, though. Now it comes to McMullen. His shot up into the glass, 20 seconds left in the period. Cook ends up tripping and falling as he tried to work ahead with the puck. And it's played back down. Picked up there by Harlow. Nine seconds left to go. Harlow gets knocked down. Puck is in the corner. Harlow gives his man a shove. And they'll blow the whistle with 2.6 seconds left. Which I'm thinking at this point, maybe discretion may have been the better part of Valor and just let the clock run out on those last 2.6 seconds. But now we still get a little bit of jostling and we'll get the face off and that will pretty much do it. Here for this one, there you go, the final score. The John L. Jim Cougars get their first two points of the tournament. They beat the South Shore Lumberjacks by a score of five to one. Three goals in the span of six minutes and 43 seconds in the third period. Two of them by Reese Allen, one by Brandon Clark are the difference. And there is your final score line, 5-1 for the Cougars. They'll be back in action at six o'clock tonight against the Storm. While the Lumberjacks, they'll be back out on the ice at eight o'clock tonight when they take on the host, Wherewell Phantom Bombers. We'll get the line up at their respective blue lines for the player of the game presentations. And for the Lumberjacks, certainly Ryan Hopkins again was a standout. Woodworth had a good game, getting an assist on the only goal. And it is indeed the captain, Luke Woodworth. He was all over the ice in this one, had a very solid performance. And Lucas Frazier with very quietly 27 saves on 28 shots. There was so much going on, you almost didn't notice that Lucas Frazier was having such a good game. And then all of a sudden you look up and you go, wow, he faced 28 shots and stopped 27 of them. <laughs> Just a very solid performance by Frazier. Well deserving of the player of the game. That's going to wrap it up for this one. And it looks like we're going to get a little bit of a break before the next one as it is only 1.30 and the next one's supposed to start at 2. So we're going to take a break. We'll come back. We'll get you ready for the next game, which will involve the host, Wherewell Bombers, taking on Excel Physio. Until then, on behalf of my awesome cameraman and technical guru, Neil, this is Michael Petter saying, may your skates always be sharp. May your shots always hit the top shelf. Final score once again. The John L. Jim Cougars beat the South Shore Lumberjacks 5-1. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with you in just a little bit.